Hello everyone, welcome to episode 6, the really, <laughs> the real final episode of um, Surviving Japan, I guess that's what I'm going to call this podcast, now that uh, I'm at the end of this series, for real, for real. I just wanted to um, have another episode dedicated only to getting Wi-Fi in your home. And I, I'm not going to talk about the mobile data sims, I'm not because I've already done that. I'm not going to talk about where to get free Wi-Fi because I've already done that. What I'm going to talk about is the the epic process of um, obtaining Wi-Fi at your honorable home. Now, <laughs> the actual process and, well, just sit down, relax, like me, lean back and listen. It's very complicated. First thing, um, so there's um, there are always two options when you move uh, in Japan, like you change flats or you move into Japan. First, uh, obviously you go to your agent and you ask him like, okay, I, I would like to have a flat here and there and blah blah blah. But the most of the one of the most important questions is: Is there Wi-Fi? Is there already internet connection? in your flat and the second most important question is once you move in will you be able to use it so even though uh, like will you be able to use it and if not what do you have to do exactly to like do you have to renew a contract do you have to like start from zero like myself and if the answer is uh, yes there is internet and yes you don't have to do anything but pay the checks perfect now, one more thing you have to ask is um, how is the internet? Like, not just how fast it is, is it unlimited? I've had uh, offers that said 7 gigs of Wi-Fi, of home Wi-Fi, and then after that they just drop your speed to like one-tenth of the actual speed, like if you use up all that data. I found that blasphemous. And there are loads of spam uh, messages in your physical mailbox. Like I had two to three already uh, that were clearly scam. And my Japanese friend also said, well, yeah, this is, the, 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 these are just scam providers. Uh, and if the, the agent's answer is no, there is no internet in your flat, then here's what you have to do. First thing, uh, you could just walk into an entity Docomo store because they're big, uh, everyone loves them, they're friendly, they do not speak English though, but they still, they're at least foreigner friendly, so that's something, uh, and have a, a contract there, uh, and they will find out if, uh, like, uh, like, obviously if you go to entity Docomo, then uh, your provider is going to be Docomo Net. Uh, and the reason why I have to emphasize that is um, uh, flats east, F L E T S, are basically the infrastructure maintainers owners. I think, uh, at least here in Tokyo, they are. So they they have the infrastructure. And for you non-technical guys, what it means in a nutshell is that um, you have to know what kind of you know, like you have to know what kind of uh, telecommunication infrastructure your house mansion flat whatever you call it has um, usually like my flat is like older than me actually um, and I'm 32 uh, this house uh, has only telephone wires in the walls like it's, it's the same as like electricity gas whatever uh, and actually, uh, my internet is like, uh, it's a modem connected to the telephone wire system of this house. So the communication is through the telephone wire, technically. <clears throat> uh, with that said, that's cool and all, and Flats owns the infrastructure. So first of all, the, uh, the easiest way, I think, is to go to NT Tokomo for sure. They find out who's your, like, uh, if your infrastructure is uh, is like they will call up flats, uh, well they, they will call up your um, your infrastructure provider, let's say, and they will ask them, okay, this is the address. Can you 
like stream data like do, does this house has uh, has any uh, telecommunication infrastructure built and if the answer is yes and it's usually yes because we're still talking about tokyo uh then basically ntt docomo is like a acting as like a middle person uh negotiating with flats and negotiating with thing with their uh, branch so to speak their their internet provider branch called docomo net uh so you go into docomo store you do the contract fine and dandy you sign everything uh you uh you get an appointment uh settled with an engineer who will come to your place like mine was like two or three weeks later that i've uh, did the contract so an engineer guy comes he brings a modem he brings cables uh, he brings a strange looking device that seems to be detecting if the line is all right and he measures like voltage and um, and speeds and stuff like that and then he installs the modem so basically, as I said, my modem is connected to the telephone plug in the wall, the the phone socket, uh, and the modem. Well, basically, what the modem does is it's a, it's a modulator. It's a yeah, it's a modulator demodulator. So it uh, because the telephone wire system is analog, it it needs to be digitalized on my side because all these. Uh, new equipment let's say laptops routers and stuff they are communicated digitally right but then the telephone wires are better like uh, they were designed for analog communication so that's what the modem is in a nutshell so you need a modem but you do not need a router uh, like if you have your own or sorry router if you have your own router then you can use it no problem with it you can rent a, a router from NTT Docomo if you like, but I think it's just uh, money thrown out. Uh, it's not that much. I think it's like 500 yen per month. Okay, so my contract, my internet contract, that I'm getting unlimited data for like 100 megabits, uh, even though it's like I did the Docomo Hikari, which is, Hikari means light, so it's technically fiber. My house doesn't support fiber, as said my house has a telephone cable infrastructure once they will upgrade then i will get one gig until then i have 100 megs or uh, sorry 100 megabits per second technically which, which is maximum speed by the way and it's not that bad uh, i mean i did net speed and it performed quite well so i can't really mm, complain the internet is fine I pay 4,000 yen uh, for this per month, and um, yeah, as I said, it's quite nice, but the, the process is quite uh, complex. So the engineer guy comes, and he only just installs the modem. He doesn't do anything, he doesn't know anything, he's just, again, a middleman uh, who uh, pretty much works with flats to to connect to flats system with this modem that's all he does then then you have to phone your provider like uh, you're gonna get um like you have your contract right that you signed that entity document they give it to you you take it home then you get a, a, a letter from uh, from entity docomo uh again it's not document it's entity docomo uh, they send you like uh, a customer ID and password and that is for Well, I'm not sure what it was for really because uh, I was struggling with it. I Downloaded an easy setup app for flats that I could use and connect to flats network uh, but That um, contract or customer id that i was talking about and that access key that came from by mail from ntd docomo is a different one that's for um basically entering their site ntd docomo site now the provider docomo net and i know this is getting complex docomo net is different you have to phone them 
and uh, let them know your contract number that you got from the mail from Entity Docomo. And I think I also had to give them the access key. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I had to yeah, give them the access key. Uh, I think calling them is easier. They don't speak much English, but if you speak a little bit of Japanese, you can pretty much go through the process. It's not that hard. So they will ask you for your name, your birth date, your your address, uh, and then uh, they will send like they can send um, you an SMS on your mobile phone uh, with the uh, with the username and the password that you need to set up your connection with. If that makes sense. Now I don't have a telephone at the moment. Like I, I don't have a mobile phone, so the last fallback option is to send you a letter. So I waited for the letter. It came like three to four days after I did this uh, application on the phone, uh, and it contained what I actually wanted: the username that that you need, the username and the password to set up a PPPoE. Now, don't ask me what that that means. That's just the way it is. That's like the the subscriber line thing. That like basically you're you have an account to to like that you have to log into through internet to use the actual internet <laughs> over their network. Anyways, that's how PPPoE works. Uh, technically, it's a it's a it's a subscriber based system to connect to a network and thus get authentication to use the internet. So I have my own router. I I just basically go into their normal settings and um, just input my username, my password, and it worked. And it worked perfectly. And uh, finally, I've got internet. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated than, than complicated than that. Let me just see my notes. Yeah, um, I think I talked about that. Yeah, PPPoE. Yeah, uh, you get snail mail. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, well, this is not really relevant. Um, regarding that easy setup program, which you could actually use to set up your uh, your internet connection. Uh, or well if you wanna like because it's it's in Japanese it doesn't work on an English operating system it only works on Windows so one fallback option if you wanna if, like if you use Mac or Linux you could use X window plus you will need like a special um, kind of um, uh, application that sets your local to Japanese, otherwise you cannot run that program. <clears throat> well, I'm gonna just uh, put those links in uh, the description below or somewhere, and then you can figure it out. Like if if you if you run into this problem with trying to run a Japanese application on an English Windows, and obviously you don't wanna install a Japanese Windows because who needs that? You can uh, pretty much use this program, it changes your local, it's very useful. It works like a charm. And uh, yeah, it basically emulates your localization of your windows. And uh, one more thing, that contract uh, ID or number that I was talking about starts with the CAF, at least for me. And uh, the the access key or security, how I, what is it called? I think it was called access key. Yes, access key. Well, um, I'm not gonna walk you through how to set up a PPPoE, but yeah, just Google it. <laughs> Anyways, that's pretty much it. This is not really a long episode. I just really wanted to share my thoughts about this, like how to get your Wi-Fi done. Uh, it's really, quite stressful process and if you have no idea like if you don't get the concept because in europe it's usually like the provider is like who you go to like you go to an isp and you're like hey i want to use the internet <laughs> and i don't know how complicated it is if you wanna like uh, if you have no infrastructure i think that's like uh, like uh, i've heard stories that engineers come and they 
they they just get you a cable from the street and stuff and uh, thus you have uh, internet like they actually have to install the cables in your flat now luckily I had the telephone communication infrastructure already done but it's only 100 megs so what can you do it's not really Hikari uh, even though I live in Shinjuku it doesn't seem like the Tokyo is that well developed yet at least not this part of uh, of town although it should be Anyways, uh, without further ado, thanks for listening, and this really concludes this uh, Surviving Japanese, uh, su- Surviving Japan uh, podcast, and uh, I hope you could use some of the information I had in there. If not, well, <laughs> you wasted around uh, three and a half-ish hours of your life. But if you found anything of use, I'm really glad and uh, I, I wish you a pleasant stay in Tokyo if you if you if you've done the same as I did like uh, moving here is pretty fun and um, in the long run it's fine but once you get all the stuff done it's